Welcome back friends. I hope you are following my videos as far as customs law is concerned. In my earlier videos, I have given you an overview of the entire customs law. In this video, we are starting formally with the object of the act. As usual, I will recommend you to have the notebook and pen ready so that you can take the notes. So, the topic of this video is object of the act. This is different from pre preamble. Because the preamble given in the act is very very simple and that makes nothing clear for a student who is reading it law for the first time. Preamble given in the act. Is the very first line of the act you can say. This says to consolidate and amend the law relating to customs. This is the preamble given therein. Now what is being consolidated, what is being amended, what for, what is customs, I will not take you into that much of detail, I will directly come to the object. Now when you have gone through the entire act, then you will understand what the act actually meant for. So instead of waiting till the end, let us clarify it in the beginning. What is the purpose of the act? Okay, so object or you can say purpose of the act. Now, according to me, there are three purposes for which this act is meant. Number one, this provides for levy and collection of duties on import of goods into India and export of goods from India. Take note of three objects because every word I am going to explain. Levy and collection of duties on import of goods into India and export of goods from India. Number two, regulating import and export of goods to a certain extent the prime objective of this act the customs act 1962 this is point number 1 Levy and collection. Number two, regulating import and export of the goods, not the services. And number three, matters ancillary or incidental. there too. Friend, the purpose of writing on the board is multiple, multifold. When you read and write, writing one time is better than reading 25 times. Write this. 
and after the end of video revise whatever notes you have taken and share your feedback okay so three points number one levy and collection of duties on import of goods into india and export of goods from india number two regulating import and export of the goods to a certain extent this is not the law exclusively dealing with the regulation of import export limited extent is there other provisions which regulate import export of the goods foreign trade policy and then matters ancillary incidental there too and as i believe you may be aware of that the foreign trade policy is prepared under a separate law that is called foreign trade development regulation act 1992 that is not the customs act Okay, so that is another law altogether. So the threefold purposes of the act, number one, levy and collection of duty, number two, regulating import-export, number three, matters ancillary or incidental there too. Now, what is the meaning of ancillary and incidental? Ancillary means something absolutely essential, absolutely necessary, without that it will not be complete. For example, if I say the assessment of duty, that is computation of the amount which is payable by way, of, by way of duty or tax, that cannot be determined unless valuation is done. Valuation is something ancillary. Right? Incidental comes which may be there, may not be there. Okay. So that is not an example here what can be considered ancillary because everything is necessary in the law but so many things are there which are not absolutely necessary for every situation say for example advance rulings not compulsory in every situation not necessary even without advance ruling things are working so that is something ancillary or rather incidental so ancillary is absolutely essential incidental is something Something which may be there, may not be there. So when I put a slash, it does not mean both are identical. No, these are absolutely different. Ancillary is something absolutely necessary and incidental which may be there, may not be there. I give you example. Right. Similarly, settlement, when there is a dispute in connection with the amount of the duty. So settlement is an option. Another option is appeal. Okay. So whether settlement or appeal. So settlement is not something compulsory. Again, it is an option that will come under the category of incidental. Okay. So this is the purpose. Now every word of this, this purpose of the act I am going to explain. Okay. In the first word, in the first object I said, levy and collection. Levy and collection. In my earlier videos, I explained that no tax can be levied unless so authorized by the Constitution of India by making the law. And as per entry number 83 of, of the list number 1 of schedule 7 of the constitution, the central government is having exclusive right to impose duty or levy tax on import and export. Only central government, right? So first is this, the constitution Constitution of India has exclusively authorized the central government to levy tax on import export there are provisions also saying that a state government cannot levy any tax on a transaction that comes under the category of import export that's why i have used the word exclusively authorization is given to the 
central government and levy is authorized under the customs act by section 12 so section 12 provides for levy of duty on import of goods into from India. In this video, I am not explaining section 12. That itself requires a quite long discussion. So here section 12, section 12 of the Customs Act 1962 provides for levy of duty on the import and export of the goods in, uh, into or from India. So import into and export from. And this does not make any distinction who is the importer, who is the exporter. So even if the government is the importer or government is the exporter, the same duties are applicable as those are applicable for import export of the goods by any other person. So when we come to section 12 in the next video, I'll explain section 12 in full detail and majority of the important provisions in relation to assessment are covered under section 12 itself indirectly. Okay, so don't miss on that. So the constitution of India or giving the exclusive right to the central government to levy tax on import and export. At the same time, section 12 of the Customs Act provides for levy of the duty on import and export of the goods import, goods import into India and export from India. Now, what is the meaning of the word levy? Levy means charging or imposition or creating liability. Okay, so now let me, let me write that. <clears throat> so levy is levy means you can say charging charging the tax or imposition or there can be creation of legal liability creation of legal liability almost all three all three are synonymous so this tax on import export of the goods is levied by virtue of section 12 of the customs act read with section 2 of the customs tariff right that is levy so without levy there cannot be a collection if you collect some tax without being authorized by the law it is, that will become unconstitutional because constitution of india has already said that no tax can be levied unless authorized by law so by chance if you were not understanding the sequence between levy and collection friends be clear that first of all there is a liability created and then only there can be collection if it is the other way around that first collect and later on we will create the law for the tax that will be unconstitutional so that's why we use the word levy first and then comes collection so collection is only how and when the person will pay and that will be called collection and if not paid what is to be done then in case there can be a demand there can be a recovery there can be penalty etc so many things are there in connection with the collection okay but between levy and collection the most important thing which is not listed here that is called assessment very very important All right so levy is there that provides for the collection of tax but on what basis whether this is a fixed amount or this is a certain percentile or how it is going to be computed that is called assessment so that is hidden between the word levy and collection so sequence is levy assessment and collection 
liability created okay now determine how much amount of tax is payable that is the assessment and then comes collection okay so assessment means what assessment means quantifying the amount payable as a duty exactly determining how much amount is payable by way of duty that is called assessment now this term is defined under section 2 subsection 2 of the customs act assessment defined under section 2 subsection 2 of the customs act and in the definition there are two parts first part talks about what is the meaning of assessment and second part talks about what is included in the term assessment includes so assessment the real meaning or simplest understanding of the word assessment is quantifying the amount of payable as a duty how much amount is payable by way of duty right so there are the term is defined under section 2 subsection 2 and there are two parts and for writing the, in the more details i need to clear this Okay, so <coughs> divide that in two parts here. Means and includes. Now the amount of duty is based on two things whether duty is ad valorem or duty is specific even before explain this i'm giving you something more to understand you can take a note in the side somewhere okay so duties this is not the part of the main chart right the duties can be ad valorem Or it may be specific. Ad valorem means payable at fixed percentage of value. If the value goes up amount of duty goes up and if the, if the percentage comes down amount of duty comes down right value goes up duty goes up value comes down this also comes down rate goes up amount of duty goes up rate comes down and this also comes down in case of a specific amount of duty is fixed irrespective of the value say for example rupees 5 per quintal whatever be the item I am not talking about the item that you will find that in the tariff what kind of duty is applicable okay so specific duty is fixed amount for each accessible unit Say for example, gold per 10 grams. Some other item can be there for 1 kg. Other item can be for 100 kg. Third item can be for per quintal. If the duty is specific, value becomes irrelevant. In this case, value is irrelevant 
while where the duty is ad valorem value is the base for computation of duty this is the basis very very different so there are two types of duties either ad valorem or specific ad valorem is where the duty is payable at a certain percentage of the value and specific duty means the fixed amount of duty with respect to the value so ultimately we said assessment means a determination of the amount of duty so even before we go for assessment we must understand what kind of duty is applicable that is also part of assessment okay so i have you have already taken the note of that anywhere you find that you have not taken the note please pause the video take the notes and then continue okay so i was telling about assessment means and include the first thing is in assessment number 1 determining duty ability whether any duty is payable or not whether goods attract any duty so even if there is no duty or the nil rate of duty that is also required to be determined in the in accordance with the procedure of law and then that is also called assessment including nil duty so the duty is nil it does not mean the moment goods are brought into india you can take away the goods no the proper procedure will remain same with their goods are dutiable or goods are non dutiable bill of entry has to be filed proper permission has to be taken then only goods can be removed okay so whether duty or no duty that is a different issue okay but first question is determining duty ability and when some, when importer comes to a conclusion that the no duty is payable is still the procedure remains same and the process of assessment has to be followed so determining duty ability number 2 determining identity classification value when goods are identified only then those can be classified under the customs tariff and once that the, the classification is done means you know what kind of duty whether it can it is ad valorem or it is specific duty then the next question comes of value now value can again be of two types this value again it can be of two types this can be transaction value or this can be tariff value both the values are covered under section 14 of the customs act when we come to the chapter of valuation i'll explain you details what is the transaction value what is tariff value but here i am just giving you reference two types of values are possible so when you identify and classify the goods what do you get to know the type of duty applicable whether ad valorem or specific number 2 rate of duty right only then the matter can proceed otherwise not so if there is a specific duty the valuation is not to be done at all in that case determination of the quantity the quality the value at the uh, and other things will come relevant because the amount of duty depends on the quantity because the amount for per assessable unit is fixed so you need to know how many assessable units are there when the duty is 
at Valerum, you are hardly bothered about the number of unit, then you are concerned about the value. Right. So value will become relevant only where the duty is at Valerum. Right. The duty can be either this or this. Then comes after this determining place of origin where from goods are originating. Say for example, goods originating from Pakistan attract a rate of duty 200% even if those are coming through some other country. And with multiple countries, the government of India is having bilateral trade agreements. And in that bilateral agreement, the government of India gives a status of most favored nation to some of the countries. And the rate of duty applicable on the goods imported from the most favored nation is lesser than the standard rate of duty applicable place of origin becomes very very important in addition to that concessional rates where the concessional rates can be applied should be known and over and above that exemptions what are the exemptions available when we know everything only then we can determine the exact amount of duty otherwise not and everything is covered in the separate lectures assessment is a big topic assessment includes a valuation assessment includes a classification assessment includes the types number of types of duties big chapter assessment right and understanding that entire subject requires number of lectures okay and my idea is that if you are studying with me you need not cram law simply understand then later on you will have to cram only the section number and the title thereof nothing else subject is understood so, now what else is included here in so before we talk about what else is included question is who is going to do the self who is going to do the assessment primary responsibility of determining the amount of duty payable is on the importer exporter so that is called a self assessment includes self assessment right so whenever import export documents are filed that is also a basic computation of the duty liability. Then reassessment. Reassessment is by the officer. Under specific situations, so those self-assessment is covered under section 17. Reassessment is covered under section 17 and other sections as well, but mainly under section 17. Then we have provisional assessment. all types of assessment so whether it is self assessment or it is reassessment or it is provisional assessment every other thing will be covered under the definition of the term assessment as long as the end result of the exercise is determination of the duty so the first line i tell i told you about the assessment is quantification of the amount of duty payable right and all that means this much Determining dutyability, including nil rate, determining identity, classification, classification means under schedule number one, item falls under which chapter, under which heading, what is the purpose of classification, so that you can determine the type of duty and the rate of duty applicable. Then the value and value I said there can be transaction value or tariff value, right? Determining the place of origin, why? Because the most favored nation status attracts a lesser rate of duty and uh, we have certain other provisions where the duty is payable at a concessional rate then exemptions available so when everything is known only then the correct amount of duty can be quantified right and that is that includes self-assessment reassessment self-assessment by the importer exporter reassessment is by the officer provisional assessment is again either requested by importer exporter or 
ordered by the officer under section 18 okay so this is about what is called assessment so i said levy assessment and collection right so just for your reference self assessment is covered under section 17 reassessment is covered under section 17 provisional assessment is covered under section 18 and levy is covered under section repeat with me section 12 section 12 of the customs act that is covered there okay self assessment under which section 17 reassessment is covered under section 17 provisional assessment under section 18 so who can order provisional assessment the officer can he do that on his own either on his own or an application of the importer or exporter so when we come to the chapter related to assessment section 17 18 we will discuss that in full detail okay So two words we have covered, levy, number two, assessment. Number three word is collection. So collection or you can say payment this is section 46 to 47. In case of import, the bill of entry is required to be filed under section 46 along with the all relevant documents including the amount of duty determined by the import. And the duty becomes payable when the assessed copy of the bill of entry is returned and payment is as per section 47. Right. All other provisions follow after the section, after section 47. Duty is not paid, what happens? there can be demand then the procedure how the demand is finally finalized then how the amount will be recovered what happens in case of late payment whether any interest etc is payable if excess amount is paid whether refund is there or not then if in case of uh, failure to pay there can be some penalties confiscation all those things are after section 47 so three important words levy Number two, assessment. Number three, collection. Okay. Now, these are first three words. The object of the act or you can say the purpose of the act is levy and collection of tax on import of goods into India and export of goods from India. Okay. So, the word <coughs> India. This is defined under section 2, subsection 27 of the Customs Act. Now, India, this simply says India includes Indian territorial waters. India includes Indian territorial waters. So, includes means what? It is not defining, it is saying it includes. So, for the purpose of Customs Act, India includes the territorial water. It means the where the land border of India ends, that is not the end of India. It goes up to Indian territorial water for the purpose of Customs Act. Otherwise, India goes up to 200 nautical miles from the baseline or the nearest coastline, 200 nautical miles. But for the purpose of custom duty, this is 12 nautical miles, that is Indian territorial waters. So when the goods enter into this, import begins. Crossing the Indian territorial water is not an import. The concept of import I will explain again in detail in the next video. Okay, so when we say import that includes Indian territorial water, so, for import and export, for both the terms, this becomes very, very relevant. Import begins when the goods enter into Indian territorial waters. Right. So, in the next video, I will explain you the concept of import and export. Okay. So, and the word import means
This is bringing the goods into India from outside India. I told you I'll explain this in the next video. So this import India is this and when we say import bringing the goods from a place outside India. So the word India prima facie is this but here under this definition the term import the meaning of word India changes. So when the import begins and how long the process continues and when the import ends all that I'm going to explain you in the next video. And export this is sending goods from India to a place outside India. These both the terms require detailed understanding including some case laws. Right? So what is import? What is export for the purpose of levy and collection of customs duty? That we are going to discuss in the next video. Okay. So this is India import export. Now import and export both are related to the most important concept that is goods. Goods this itself is defined under section 2 subsection 22. We cannot apply the definition as given under the sale of goods act. We cannot apply the definition given under GST. The term goods is defined for the purpose of customs differently. So for the purpose of customs, goods includes, of course, this, mean, this doesn't have any meaning the term includes. Actually, this should be means. Includes. Number one, vehicle, vessel and aircraft. Number two is stores. Number three baggage. Is stores itself is a defined term under section 2 subsection 38. Baggage is defined under section 2 subsection 3. Number four this talks about currency and negotiable instruments currency and other negotiable instruments number 5 any other movables The broadest category is any other movables. These are specific. This is open. And majority of the provisions of the Custom Act are in relation to other movables. These are very specifically defined as stores and baggage. The concept of stores, specific provisions are covered from section 85 to section 90. And for the baggage, we have section 76, rather 77 up to section 81 plus baggage rules are there understanding the concept of goods for the purpose of customs requires again detailed analysis okay so that also i'll explain you in a separate video so what is import export that is one video what is called goods that is another video do not miss the video series and if you want to have the full course get in touch on the numbers displayed 
that is also given in the description box never miss the videos and do share your opinion okay so this is all about goods so the first object of the act that is levy and collection of duty on import of goods into india and export of goods from india okay so that is the first prime important thing number two regulation regulating import export regulating import export of goods right customs act and foreign trade policy okay under the customs act section 11 authorizes the government to prohibit import or export or both of any article either conditionally or unconditionally those are referred as prohibited goods under section 11b the central government is having a right to notify certain goods and to identify and control the circulation thereof within the country those are referred as notified goods and under section 11 i we have provisions regarding specified goods so under the customs act we have prohibited goods notified goods specified goods and then other all all other goods other goods right so the basic presumption is that all goods other than notice other than prohibited notified specified are allowed to be imported freely basic assumption is not wrong but here we have foreign trade policy okay so under the foreign trade policy certain terms and conditions can be prescribed therefore right so those may be subject to those terms and conditions so those may be free import free import means no restriction no condition no authorization required or those may be subject to authorization subject to authorization authorization means you can see license is required so this is one category where the import is free another category in that is subject to the authorization now authorization required for different purposes right say for example you want to import second hand goods so in certain cases the, that is authorized in certain cases not authorized and, and if that those are second hand refurbished capital goods then specific conditions are there as per customs act those are under this category but when we go to the foreign trade policy then we have to see that in more detail whether import is free or that is subject to any condition or that is subject to any authorization right authorization is required for other purposes as well so we have a right to import the goods capital goods as well as other consumables required for the manufacture production of the export goods without paying any duty and that is again advanced authorization or duty free import authorization those are different concepts which we will discuss in detail a little later so this and under the foreign trade policy the dgft is also having a right to prohibit import export of any of the goods so prohibited goods under the foreign trade policy are there and prohibited goods are under section 11 are also there okay both are both of the provisions are more or less identical but the authorities are different under section 11 the central government is going to prohibit under under the foreign trade policy the power of the prohibiting the import export of the goods is going to be exercised by the dgft of course section 11 says that prohibition under other laws will also be applicable so implied it is 
that whatever prohibition is under the foreign trade policy, there will be applicable under section 11 also. But for that, a notification is required to be issued. In the first lecture, it is a little heavy. But I'll explain that in the subsequent series of lectures. Okay. So, this is about regulating the import and export of the goods. So, this is this act is not exhaustive. It has given you some idea that import export can be prohibited on these grounds. What are the prohibited goods? When we come to the section, I'll give you some list of the items which are prohibited. What are notified goods? What are specified goods? All that we'll discuss in detail when we come to the specific section. Right. And what are the free import where the authorization is required? What is called advanced authorization? What is called duty free import authorization? What is the EPCG scheme, export promotion capital goods scheme? All those we will discuss under the foreign trade policy. Okay, so two points we have covered. Point number one, levy and collection of duty on import and export of the goods. Levy plus assessment plus, plus collection. Number two, regulating import export. Number three, matters ancillary or incidental there too. So, ancillary matter is certainly like valuation, payment of interest, demand, recovery. All those provisions are ancillary, including penalties. And other matters are settlement, appeals, those kind of issues, your syllabus may or may not have all the provisions. Okay, so check what is part of your syllabus and continue with that portion only. So this is only about the object of the Customs Act 1962. Preamble given in the Act says, it is to consolidate and amend the law relating to customs. I gave you purpose of the act. Number one, levy and collection of tax on import and export of the goods from India. Number two, to regulate import export of the goods. And number three, to provide for matters ancillary or incidental there too. Friends, do read all the notes that you have taken minimum three times. Don't forget to share the video and do share your feedback and if you are interested in the full course on indirect taxes do get in touch on the number numbers displayed see you later thank you